I'm Michelle. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I posted a video and I wanted to come up with a video for you guys. I know that a lot of people have been asking me a lot about Japan and if I'm in Japan. Right now I'm not in Japan, I'm in the United States. Uh, and I hope to do a master's degree in Japan or live there in the future. So let's get right into the video and as the title promises, I am going to be talking about biggest discounts in Japan. The number one to,、uh, thing that you should keep in mind when you are in Japan are SIM cards and pocket Wi-Fi. I did some research and when I was in Japan, I rented a pocket Wi-Fi and it was about $50 for a whole week. It was a little bit pricey. But I was in Tokyo for only five days and I really needed a way of getting around without getting lost or having to waste time looking for certain things. So I just purchased that and I never looked back on it, even though it was a little bit expensive. But I think that you guys will get a better deal because I was looking up online and I found even better deals now.、Uh, I don't know if prices will change now that the We're in the pandemic, but I'm pretty sure that these are regular prices, and many other travelers have reviewed this product, and it is said to be very good, very high speed, and you will not need anything other than this pocket Wi-Fi or SIM card that they provide. Here are the prices that are available. You can get from eight days all the way up to 90 days, and I'm pretty sure that they can. Other plans that you can have for maybe a whole year for foreigners. You can get the eight days for unlimited data for about $40. Look down below at the description to see more details. So, the name of the company that I looked into was Mobile SIM Cards. They have English customer service. They guarantee your money. If you have any problems with it, they will return your money back no matter what. You are able to pick it up at the airport and you can pick them up at your hotels and hostels when you're there. If you are worried about talking to somebody in Japanese or in English and you are afraid that they may not understand you, you can also send them to your home in your home country for free. So, based on the reviews, I think that this is legit, and many other YouTubers and tourists have reviewed this, and they all have really good things to say. They have discounts, and they're very flexible in arranging the best price for you and delivering it as fast as they can to you. Number two, I think that the best thing when you get to Japan, if you're on a trip for only one week or two weeks, is the luggage delivery. You are able to send your luggage from the airport to the hotel or from the hotel to the airport without having to deal with luggage, luggaging it around, all around the city and wasting a couple hours of your precious time in Japan. They are very reliable, they take care of your suitcase really well. The prices start around $10 to around $20. Of course, it all depends on the company that you go with. It also depends on how heavy and how big the luggage is. Most companies will have a designated price for each item. So, if you have maybe a luggage, it'll be maybe $15, and anything added after that is maybe another $15. If you have overweight items, I'm sure that you are able to send them still, but with a overcharge of weight. You are able to drop off your luggage at convenience stores, airports, hotels, hostels, and some other tourist destinations that have the drop off location for your luggage. Just make sure that you look for this symbol, and they most likely will take your luggage and deliver it to wherever you need to go. Number three. The next discount that I'm going to be talking about is one of my favorites is the regional cards that are in each area of Japan. And I used only the one for Kansai area because I was there for most of my time in Japan, and that is the Aikoka card. There is other ones such as Suica, which is for the Japan Tokyo area. And other areas around Tokyo. Of course, there's other ones、uh, like、uh, Pasmo. You can take a look and see which area you're, you're going to be in so you can purchase that one. So basically, you have to buy the card for $5, and 
it's a deposit so once you return it at the end it'll be ten dollars for traveling to and from in the trains in that area so let's say if i travel to tokyo i will be able to use all the trains and um most uh, metro stations with that card and i just scan it and i go through and it'll take the money off instead of having to deal with counting to see how much money i need for each ticket because it is very complicated if you go that route but it is possible what i really like about these cards is that you can use them on transportation buses uh not the shinkansen the fast trains you can't use those um, there are maybe a one or two that you can use, but most of them you need to get a separate ticket. Uh, the other cool thing you could do is some air tourist destinations will allow you to use your Ikoka card at convenience stores and vending machines as well as sometimes even grocery stores. So make sure that you look for the signs of your uh, Ikoka card or Suica card, look for that logo and if they have that logo it means that they do accept it and it's basically like a gift card or a credit card that you're using. The coolest part is that foreigners get discounts so make sure that you look up and see what discounts they have. For example, when I arrived in Japan I got to Osaka and I had to travel all the way to Kyoto and I bought my card and also the Haruka Express train with my Aikoka card because it was a good deal and I think it was only 10 more dollars and I got the card, more money in my card and the ticket train to Kyoto one way. You can purchase two way and also you can purchase of course other areas of Japan. You just need to make sure that you look and I will include this link right here for you guys to take a look because that is like the best reviews you can ever find. It's like your little mini dictionary. If you have any discount questions or questions about Japan, I really recommend you it looking at this site because it is very helpful. Another little side note is that you should always keep a picture of your passport or even carry it around if you're okay with that because a lot of these destinations, they all require you to show your passport. If you run out of money from the card, in which we probably will, uh, make sure that you go into the train stations and you can uh, put in your card and uh, put some more yen in. It, I'm not sure if there is a limit on how much money you can put, but I always recommend putting maybe like $30. Of, of course, it also depends on how much you'll be traveling by train or bus. All the machines are in English, Japanese, uh, Chinese, Korean, and other languages maybe. So don't worry about, or, uh, about figuring out how to read the machine when you're trying to load up your card again. If you are wondering how much uh, is your balance in the card, uh, when you are using the card, uh, just make sure that you scan it and there'll be a screen on the little machine that will tell you how much money it took off and how much money there is left. The last discount that I'll be talking about is number four, it's the Shinkansen Passes. Keep in mind that the passes are not for all trains, there are some Shinkansen trains that are not in the discount. Children ages from 6 to 11 years old have a 50% discount and anything younger from 6 years old uh, for 5 uh, to a baby is free. Here is the map for the Shinkansen Pass. You are able to go on to all these places. Make sure that you check in on the website to make sure that these are accurate and up to date. Here you can see the approximate prices for Tokyo to Osaka, Kyoto, Tokyo, or wherever you need to go. Make sure that you look up online for the approximate Shinkansen Pass and make sure that it is worth it because sometimes if you are not going to be using these passes enough, it won't be worth it. It might be better just to pay for them at the moment that you need them. So make sure that you look these up and select all the places that you are planning to go to verify if the pass is worth it. All right, guys, that is everything for my video. I hope that you would like my video. Make sure that you click my like button and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.